Hey guys, what is going on? Doran Court here uh, with a video on the players. Uh, this time we're going to take a look at the note echo effect that's been added to Reason 9. Um, now once again, the disclaimer, this is the beta version of Reason 9 as I'm recording this and of course the performance uh, and some minor details might not be the same as in the final version. But uh, now that that's out of the way, let's take a look at the device. So um, here's what it looks like. Now uh, the note echo is an echo effect for MIDI notes. So as I have put this between the mix channel and the radical piano, this will intercept MIDI data and do something with it before it gets sent to the, to the device. Now, um, let me press the C key on radical piano and um, I'll only press it once, but you'll hear it five times. And I'll explain why that's the case in just a sec. Now, as you can see, um, once I hit the button, uh, we run through this little sequence of four notes over here. This uh, circle over here, this green one, this first one represents the initial note. So once again. And if I press two buttons in a row, they all get put through this echo effect. Okay, um, now you might uh, think, well, this is kind of sim uh, similar to a delay. Well, not necessarily, because a delay works with audio material while the note echo modifies your MIDI notes before they get put into um, your instrument. Now we have several different uh, um, we have several different uh, possibilities to work with this patch. Um, first of all, we have the step length. So um, at the moment, it's uh, tempo synced, um, and we are looking at a, a step length of three sixteenths. Um, we could also Turn the length up a little bit to three eighth notes. And now as you can hear, it takes more time for the steps to kick in and we could also go really fast. Okay, um, that's pretty much self-explanatory. And then um, we also have the repeats uh, dial, which allows, you, which allows us to um, set any, any number of repeats between one and 17. So um, if I go to one, it just repeats the notes once. And if I set it to nine, for example, we'll get nine repeats. That's also pretty self-explanatory. Where it gets really interesting is these velocity and pitch dials. Now, um, these uh, determine how um, the notes that are put uh, from, that are put through from the echo to the radical piano are affected. So for example, if I go um, into the velocity setting and reduce that a little bit, you can see that the velocity display uh, becomes smaller with each step. So let me show you how, what that sounds like. So each time um, it's only 89% of the original velocity and we could adjust that um, so that visually we can see that by the end of the sequence it will reach its minimum. So if I, hit, if I hit a key really hard here, or maybe use that with a chord. Um, of course, this also works in the other direction. We could turn that up to maximum. So now I'll hit a key really lightly. So yeah, um, you can uh, pull off some interesting sort of filtered style delay effects there. And with pitch, it works the same. Um, so if I turn this pitch dial up or down, it will add um, or remove semitones with each repeat. So if I set that to one and then play a note, we get a chromatic scale. Um, um, if we set it to four, for example, Um, we get a, yeah, we, I'm not really sure what that's called, but we get um, a sequence of notes where each note is four semitones higher than um, the previous one. Now, this is really interesting because you can use that to create some really nice uh, film score soundtrack type effects where you want to um, express some emotions, for example, surprise. If I take the step length down to one thirty second and hold the note down, you get this sort of um, suspense uh, sort of sound. Also, of course, credit where credit is due. Um, I've stolen this uh, from the uh, Propellerhead stream that they did. Um, props to Matthias for that one. Um, it's a really nice effect. Uh, 
Um, of course, you could also take this to the extremes and uh, go for one sixty-fourth. And then, if you um, if you put the pitch to twelve semitones and then uh, turn the repeats down, you basically. Sorry, let me just switch some settings on my keyboard here. I'm going down a couple of octaves because I want to show you an effect that you're probably going to recognize. Um, if you uh, set the step length to something really short and keep the repeats short as well, I mean, you could also add some more, and then um, keep the pitch at 12 semitones, It's they're all going to play the same note per se, but it's not going to be in the same octave. So while pressing one single key, all I'm going to press is the key of E1. Uh, you can uh, create... Um, an instrument where you can play individual melodies with just one hand with individual single notes and it will add octaves that are either up or down depending on whether you have the pitch at plus or minus 12 semitones and with the press of um, one button you instantly get the halo 3 soundtrack so yeah that's a really cool effect um, it's also really interesting uh, to work with chip tunes. Uh, he also demonstrated that in um, in the stream. And uh, the idea, if I remember correctly, originally came from Spio, good friend of mine, very talented tutorial guy on YouTube. Um, definitely do check him out. Um, he's awesome. So shout outs to him. Uh, I'll just create a quick chip tune sort of instrument here. Uh, I'll go for the synapse because I like that synth. And then I also got to change my octave back up, switch that to pulse, turn down the release a little bit, and then also I'll just quickly add a um, audiomatic retro transformer. I'll just leave that at the tape setting. Could also use circuit, but that's. Yeah, actually, I kind of like that. Okay, so here's our chiptune instrument. And what I'll do now is I'll add a note echo. And this is the initialized patch. Now what I'll do is I'll set the step length. Actually, um, yeah, I'll, I'll set the step length to 164th. I, you, I could also do it without tempo sync. So that would be somewhere around yeah, 30 milliseconds. And now I'll set the pitch up to 12. So there you go, you instantly have this uh, chip tune effect, but um, these old school Commodore 64 and uh, Atari um, sound chips, they were all monophonic, at least. I mean, I know that's not technically correct because they could play multiple um, sounds at a time, but the individual synths were monophonic, if I remember correctly. But please, I'm not one of, uh, I'm not a uh, old school video game console enthusiast, so I might be wrong on that. But anyway, as soon as you set your polyphony to uh, mono, you have an instant chip tune effect. And if you set the step, uh, sorry, if you set the amount of repeats to one. you have a really nice playable lead synth. So yeah, those are some of the possibilities uh, that you can use the note echo with. Um, I've only barely touched the surface here, uh, but um, yeah, I, I like the device quite a bit. Um, it's been very helpful in creating, uh, especially um, big lead lines lately because of, um, let me just switch back to the radical piano here. Um, so there. If I keep the step length even shorter, and then maybe um, yeah, I could compress this a little bit, and then you can start playing. You instantly get this um, fattened up effect. Um, actually, no, I think I forgot something and I'll uh, not quit the video here. I want to show you something else as well. Um, there's a chords folder and I'll explain the way this works. So chords are a couple of patches for uh, the note echo um, where uh, they set the step length to zero, which means even though technically it's an echo effect with a step length of zero, it means all 
um, all sounds get played instantly at the same time. Now what I'll do is I'll uh, go to the uh, Reason Factory sound bank here and go to the NN19 sampler patches and get a a really um, classic 90s piano sound. Oh, actually, maybe. Yeah, I guess that's gonna work. Okay, and then I'll uh, add a note echo and let's browse some of those chords folders. So, for example, the major seven one. Load that up, and as you can see here, some of those steps are turned on and off. Um, and uh, as you can click them, you can individually turn them on, you can turn them off, but they've um, used a scale where. Uh, each uh, step is increasing its pitch by one semitone, but if you skip some of them, you have um, the uh, root note, then you have um, skip note, skip note, skip note, and then another one. So uh, that makes that a major chord because this one is plus four, and uh, then you've skipped two, and then this is the fifth. Uh, so basically what will happen is, if I set the step length to something short like this, it will play a major chord and the shorter the step length gets, sometime, at some point will reach zero. And that means you've got an instant chord generator. And um, since this will always be a major seven chord, you're not changing, um, since you're not changing um, the, uh, the uh, way this is set up, you get an instant Detroit house simulator. So this is um, uh, a really nice way to sort of instantly get that effect. Yeah, this is something that I also wanted to talk about because um, because uh, it would have been a shame uh, if uh, I missed out on this tip. So yeah, uh, now I'll quit the video, or finish the video rather, and um, next time we'll take a look at the last and final player, that is uh, s the uh, dual arpeggio, uh, the, probably the most complicated and intricate one, but also uh, one that I'm really looking forward to, and then um, in another video we'll take a look at how you can combine these to create some really interesting music video, uh, sorry, mu music making machines. Um, so yeah, that was it. Uh, I'll see you in the next video. Doran Cutout.